Wait, like, can I just say this too? No, why I'm sorry. Can't? David says I have ADHD, but like it's literally 12, 13 right now. And I'm so hyper. I'm sipping coffee. You so shouldn't have had a coffee this late. Like, I know. I realize that I'm talking fast and I'm like, hold on. It's literally almost 1 a.m. Why am I this hyper? But go ahead. What were you saying? I don't even remember. Welcome back to the fam to another edition of no explanation. Number nine. Nine. Number nine. Wow. Number nine. You know, I can only do this because I broke my, I fractured my I hope thumb. you know the people listening to the podcast have no <laughs> idea what you're talking well, about. What I'm doing right now is I'm holding up my four fingers and I can't bend it all the way because when I fractured my thumb, it never I don't healed. think anyone can bend it all the way. No, this one I could do this all the way. This one's like at an angle. What is today, David? Today is, it's actually our six month anniversary. Yes, we got married on June 10th. We're six minutes away. We got married on June tenth of twenty twenty two, and it is now December tenth of twenty twenty two. So we've been married for six months. So we thought we would do a podcast, kind of just talking about was marriage what we expected it was going to be, how are things going, and update you guys a little bit on our situation. So let's start off by: Does it feel like it's been like six months? No. What does it feel like? Six years, (laughs) and for you, um, yeah, for me, like. I, I think like, man, it's already been six months. It makes me sad how fast time is going by. But then at the same time, when I try and think about my wedding, it feels like a f- faded memory. So it's like mixed emotions. Like it went by fast, but then also it feels like so long ago. Um, so It feels yeah. like a lifetime ago because I know me personally and I change often. Me in, I try to change for a positive, in a positive way. But I've changed so much <laughs> from that day. He has. And even from a year ago. It's just, mm-hmm. it it feels like it was a lifetime ago being married because there's so much has happened and positive and negative. It's like, both. yeah, I always tell people like a lot of negative has happened. Um, you know, like you said, positive too, but a lot of negative and it could seem overwhelming, but I was saying that like, I know people who took 10 years to go through, you know, what we're already working out now or took five years or they're still trying to work it out and they've been married for 20 years. And so I think that, yeah, like a lot of stuff has hit the fan really quick, but we got married really quick. We didn't quite know each other all the way yet, although we felt like we did. But now that we're married, we really got to know each other. And so I'm grateful that like all of this, I'm grateful that all the junk is coming out and we're dealing with it now because that's setting us up for like a smoother future. And we're working that out all before we have kids. And I think that's great. A lot of people try and work this out with the stress of kids, with the stress of needing a house, with the stress of that. And like, we're moving at a slower pace. And I think that's amazing, you know, because all my friends are like, how are you not pregnant yet? It's already been six months. Didn't, don't you want a baby this and that? And it's like, no, like in my mind, there's things that I want to accomplish before I have kids. You don't have to get married and have kids immediately, you know? So I don't know. I think we're at a good place for the most part. Like <laughs> things are moving quite smoothly. What are you laughing at, sir? No, it's just... I think that the, there's a lot, so much has happened. And, and for, you know, there's times where things feel like they move by slowly, but it just feels like time's moving by so fast. And I don't know, I'm laughing because I'm like, there's just, how do I even respond to that? Because if you said name 20 things that happened in the last six months, like where, where would you even start? Do you start? <laughs> The wedding night do you start at the honeymoon because even i think back to our honeymoon oh my gosh a lot has happened and and like i really didn't know you like i thought i did and you are so different now from the honeymoon like when you say like we both changed but you know how like when you're with someone like david's hair is growing out right and so it to me it doesn't seem like that but when people see them they're like oh my gosh like your hair has grown so much but when you see it happen it doesn't seem so drastic but when I look at how much you have changed since I married you it's a it's drastic and I can see it so I mean that's that's negatively because no that's positive no because I've gained 25 pounds I'm not talking about physical I'm talking about like the way that you think the way that you handle our problems the way that you like look at life has changed so much in the past six months but i think it's it's a dual effort it has to be a dual effort yeah. because if you didn't change either then if you were the same person you were from day one <laughs> well i just get perfecter and perfecter 
if you can't see the facial reactions, I, I didn't agree with that. But uh, that aside is like there's no even in, in marriage counseling, because that's something that we've been upfront about. I know a lot of couples, they want to look like they're the perfect couple on social media, that nothing goes wrong or they're not seeing anybody, but we see mar- a marriage Wait, what counselor. what do you mean? There's a lot of people on social media. No, you said like they're not seeing anybody. Are you seeing somebody? They're not seeing a marriage counselor, therapist, uh-huh. psychologist. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. It sounded like you were saying like, they're not like you're not seeing somebody else. No, they're not seeing a therapist or a marriage counselor because they don't they don't want people to know their business like that. Yeah, like we started seeing a counselor. I think it was it I probably didn't even hit one month of us being married and we were already getting counsel and like everybody on my social media was like, You already have problems, why are you getting counsel? And it's like even when you don't have problems, you should still get counsel because it's just good. It's just a healthy thing. You don't stop going to the gym because you're in shape. You keep going so that you can uphold that, right? And so counsel has been a huge, huge, huge thing in our marriage. And we're blessed because I know couples who desperately need counsel and they can't find anyone, right? And so we're blessed. We have like three people that we can reach out to at any time, any moment. And so, yeah, counsel has definitely been something that has benefited our marriage for sure, for sure, for sure. Yeah, I mean, I think, I don't know without them where... And, and and that's what I think God's design is, is he puts things in order, meaning he'll give you something. If you're looking for wisdom, what does the Bible say? If you ask for wisdom, he will grant it to you. He'll give it to you. And so we know, or I knew personally, like I wasn't at first, I didn't know this. At first I thought, okay, I know how to get married. I know how to be a husband. I know how to do all this. And then I was like, Wait a minute. This is not going according to plan. Yeah. Well, how could you know how to do something that you've never done before? Well, because gen generally I'm not bad at things. Meaning I can, if if you taught me to play a, a new game, right? I'm, I'm going to learn. I'm not going to be the best one at it. Like I, how I beat you in Boggle yesterday. You weren't the best one at it, but it's okay. I what still what love about you. today? We don't talk about today. Okay. Don't dwell on this. Don't dwell on the present. <laughs> don't dwell on the present. Is that how it goes? <laughs> So this is the first communication we had through text. He got my email from my mother because she wouldn't give him my number because she told him I wasn't allowed to text him. But anyway, I needed, I had some questions about a podcast. So she gave him my email and this was David's very first email to me. You can read it. Which one? The first one. Read it in your voice, how you sent it. Hi, Nisi. Your mom said you were starting a podcast. Congratulations. She also <laughs> said you had a few questions. Feel free to ask away. I think it'll be something you're good at, by the way. Best, David. And then I was like, hey, yes, I'm starting one. It's honestly for my dad, though, not for me. So I see it more as work and less play. I downloaded Audacity to create and Podbean to upload. Have you done a podcast? Question mark. I spent like two hours watching videos on how to use Audacity, and I was still lost. Crying emoji. I need someone to help me. Also, I know my parents think I'm still 12, but I'm not. Uh, text me. Like, what even is email? Cry face. I don't do phone calls or FaceTime. LOL. But text me. Thanks for reaching out. Bestis. And then I responded to, um, first, you can call me winner, champion, number one, or David. LOL. Second, I've done podcasts when I was with Film on TV and they uploaded to their servers on my network. It really depends on the format and where you are trying to post. If it's audio only, then there's Apple, Spotify, Google, etc. If it's video, then you can add it to YouTube, Vimeo, etc. For audio files, you'll need to do other things, which there are big platforms. That way you're not doing extra work. Third, you don't know how to answer the phone on a smartphone or use FaceTime. Kidding, I wasn't going to do that anyways. <laughs> and then I said, you should really get into podcasting and there's ways to make money from that, David. So that was our first interaction through email. I think that he probably learned some things about me from that email. Do you think so? That you learned more than you had known about me from the two times you met me before that? Uh, Well, th- I think I would only learn one thing from that. And what's that? Was that there was some interest there from you. Where do you see interest in that email? Because one, people don't write emails like that if they're interested. Like what? 
it was thought out. It was quick because I know you were on your way to, to law school, but it was quick, but it was still thought out. And you threw it wasn't some, thought out though. I was texting some, and driving. You threw some emojis in there, and then you said for me to text you if if a girl doesn't want to be bothered, they're not going to give someone their phone number. Okay, that is true. What something that I always tell people is like, if you guys are sending emojis, that's on another level, right? So if I'm going to text like a work person or um, a coworker, right? Like I'm talking like if I'm texting a boss or a coworker. I'm not going to use emojis. That's taking it to a personal level. So he's right. I used emojis. That's my tell. Um, from him, I don't really think I learned too much more about him. Um, but he kept it very professional. And I like how he loosened up a little bit and he used an emoji in that one. And then I was like, okay, now he's interested. Because I know I use emojis to show that we're on another level. And he used an emoji. So um, after that email, he did text me and we ended up texting and getting married. That, not, not that like, feels like, not that, like it that. feels like that's what happened not like that not like that there, there was a lot that that happened and, and a lot in six months and to be honest i do want someone to paint me a picture of a fisherman fishing for a fish or maybe it's a a, a woman right a mermaid a mermaid <laughs> a mermaid and then you see the mermaid has a fishing line going down and around <laughs> into the man's world and hooking the fisherman that's looking to fish and get the mermaid. And that's me. <laughs> like I got fished. I got fished. You got caught. I got finessed. I was. David, how I could thought you I, say that? I, I thought I was a hunter. You came into my world. You came into my town. You pursued me. I was trying to mind my business. I told him multiple times, David, trust me, I'm not the girl you want to be with. I'm the most difficult girls. Look at all these beautiful girls in my church. Take any of them. Any of them are not going to give you a headache. And he was like, you, I want you. So don't be but there were to time, no, that like no, I was fishing just, for you. You came times, into my world. There were times where I was like, okay, peace out. Several times via text message where there was a non-response or I said, okay, fine. Maybe there is someone else better. And I was quite clear with that. And then guess what? He always came rolling back. And then though. guess what you came back with? Hey, can we talk in like five minutes? I was like, and then there's that 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 hook that I got caught with here. I thought I was throwing it out, but it was just it was just sinking into me. Yeah, I can talk in five minutes. <laughs> it's exactly, like, because the thing is, but like, I would, but I was literally done. So once I get attached. You're not going anywhere, but it's like, you have to realize that this is your fault at the end of the day, because you came into my world. You pursued me. If you would have left me alone, none of this would have happened. But once I get attached to you, you're not going. But we anywhere. weren't attached at the no, time. I was attached. No, to you, you weren't. Yes, I was. I don't believe you at that time. You I were. had my emotions. Well, what can I say? I Am think, I attached I think, to you now? I think that, <laughs> I think that. No, genuine question. Do you think I'm attached to you right now? Probably so. <laughs> you're like, I hope so. <laughs> Probably. I mean, I don't know, but probably. <laughs> it's you really sound not, hilarious. No, because <laughs> I, I feel that it's only at night. When, <laughs> no, when Today, were you trying to work? What was I doing? Well, usually it's just at night when I try to have my space. We bought a Eastern King bed and the difference between Eastern Cal King, Cal King is longer, which I could use longer too, but I want something wider because she was taken up in a queen size bed but say, so much tell of Tell the them space. what I told you when you wanted to buy that bed. It's not going to change anything. She, I'm going to still sleep all over you. She said that, but in my mind, I'm thinking, no, because I can just put her on one side and then I'll just get the middle part so that that gives me some space. But she'll bogart the middle and not just the middle, but the middle half towards me, which pushes, pushes me on the edge of the bed. And I'm like trying to figure out how I even got there in an Eastern King size bed, which I'm thinking this bed is too small now. We See, need a bigger bed. The truth is I don't push him. I like to cuddle him. He usually starts off spooning me, but then he doesn't. So in the middle of the night, I wake up and I go to him. He's always on the edge of the bed in the corner. And so I spoon him on the edge of the bed. I don't push you there. That's where you are when I wake up and start looking for you. Marco Polo, you're on the edge of the bed. Because you're right there. <laughs> okay. Like there's nowhere else for me Can to go. Can I just say this though? That is one of my favorite, favorite, favorite things in marriage is cuddling. Like, I feel like that song, like, I don't know how heaven, heaven could be better than this. Obviously, we know heaven's a lot better than this. But like cuddling, it's like literally the best 
freaking feeling in the world. And so today I was being a little bit clingy because every time I would go in the room to check on him, he would just be so freaking cute. And I would just be like, I just want to cuddle with you. I just want to get in bed. And he was like, Nisi, go away. But it's like, I, lo- I didn't say I go away. Lo- I was like, we have work to do. Yeah, but he didn't want to cuddle with me during the day. But like, I literally we could just to do. cuddle with him an entire freaking day because it's like, it doesn't get better than that. And like every night, especially lately, he's been like rubbing my back to go to sleep. Like what? Did you know you could get that in marriage? Well, you can't, but I can. No, you don't do that to me. I don't. But I did give him a massage the other day. It was supposed to be for 20 minutes, but it only lasted 11. Right. And that's because. His mind was going too much. Well, no, well that, but I'm saying you got it because it was an exchange for going to go get some food. Yeah, because he so was like, I'm like, why? Like, I have to do something. I'm manipulated because I have to do something in order to get. It's that. not manipulated, but like the no, good because, things no, in life when come I, for when people I who rub, work for them. When I rub the back, like you don't. No, I just do no, it. He does it because no. he wants me to go to sleep and leave him alone. So he's like, look, I know how she is. She's going to keep tossing and turning. If I give her a little back rub, she'll go to sleep and I can watch my documentary because I like to watch movies. He likes to watch documentaries. And so if I'm awake, I'll be like, I don't want to watch this. And he wants to watch his documentaries. So he manipulates me and says, I'll give you a, a back, back rub. rub doesn't seem like if you go to sleep, I'll give you a back rub. That's what he told me because yesterday I want to watch a movie. And he was like, I'll give you a back rub. And I'm like, okay. And then I just, I fall asleep. But here's the thing. I'm a firm believer that like good things sometimes are great, right? Like on his birthday, you can have whatever you want, you know, but you can't give the greatest stuff all the time because then they get used to it and they expect it. And that's what I've learned. Okay. So So you learn to hold things back. Yes. To this point. So, so the other day I was hungry, he was hungry and he was like, okay, let me write for like another 45 minutes and then we'll go eat. And I was like, okay. But then I came in here and I started shaking. I'm like, please, 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 can we go now? And he was like, Nisi, just let me write. Just let me write. Please, 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 can we go now? No. If you take me right now in this second, I will give you a 20. Well, first I said 10, huh? (laughs) I said, I'll give you a 10 minute um, massage. And he was like, "Mm." and I was like 20 minutes. And he was like, deal. And it was funny because I was willing to go to like 45, 60 minutes, but he stopped at 20 minutes. So he was an easy one for that. Um, so that worked out cause then we immediately went and got food and then while I was well, giving, why him, can't I get an hour one just for being your husband? Like, wait, can I just say this too? No, why I'm can't? sorry. David says I have ADHD, but like it's literally 1213 right now and I'm so hyper. I'm sipping coffee. You so should have I'm had sorry. the coffee this late. Like, I know. I realize that I'm talking fast and I'm like, hold on. It's literally almost 1am. Why am I this hyper? But go ahead. What were you saying? I don't even remember. Oh, I said that as your husband, I should be able to get an hour massage just because. Once in a while. Yes, once in a while, for sure, but not on a regular basis. But you said 20 minutes. I was only worth 20 minutes. No, no, no. It's just that my hands start to cramp after like two minutes. So 20 minutes is like an extensive time for me. Well, that was our six-month wrap up. Wait, can we talk about one more thing? David says I have ADHD. Nobody in my life has ever, ever told me that. My siblings, I have a couple siblings. I have five of them. And like two of them, I'm pretty sure have ADHD. Like when we're in church. Am I talking fast right now? Okay. When we're in church, they're like always writing and, and drawing. And I've never been like that. But David's like, like, I'll ask him a question. I'll be like, David, how was your day today? And then as he's answering it, I'll be like, what are we going to eat today? And then he's like, Nisi, I'm still answering your other question. And I'm like, okay. And I try and listen. And then I'm already on the next subject. And so where did we go the other day? We were watching something like a play or something. What were we, where were we doing? Oh, we were at Bible study. <laughs> We were at Bible study and while the guy was directing it, things kept popping into my head and I kept saying things under my breath and David would like react to him when he heard them. And then I started thinking about how when I was a kid, I was that smart aleck who while the teacher was talking, I'd say things under my breath and then the kids around me would laugh and it hit me. I'm like, maybe I do have ADHD, but it's not in the way that like my siblings have it where it's like they're always looking around and everything distracts them or they're always drawn because they can't pay attention. Mine is in talking. My ADHD comes through talking. My mind does not stay still. That's why I jump from subject to subject to subject. That's why I talk so fast. So that is a discovery that David helped me discover. I may have ADHD. Um, But yeah, I just want to talk about that. (laughs) I'm not going to sleep anytime soon. You talk for both of us. Um, (laughs) Is that good or bad? Would you prefer I don't do that? (laughs) You just do. But would you prefer I don't do that? You just do. I know, but... Sometimes that could be nice to have someone talk for you and you not have to talk. But do you not like it or do you like it? <clears throat> what do you, let me ask you, what do you think though? I think that you, I think you like it. <laughs> I think you love it. I think it gives you a break. Hmm. Okay. But what do you think? <laughs> what do I think? Yeah. 
I think I maybe I'll get used to it. I guess. So you don't like it? You I, wish I let you talk more. I mean, usually I'm a facilitator, so usually the faci- facilitator. See, you married a facilitator though. Leader. That's the problem. We're both facilitators. We're both leaders. And that's why leaders are also good listeners. Really, extremely good li- uh, leaders are really are great listeners. But we had this conversation the other day. I do listen when it comes to my friends and stuff because I'm in a I'm used to evangelizing, and so I do listen. I can listen to my friends, but when it comes to David, I listen to everybody else. Who's gonna listen to me? I have stuff to say. So you're the person who needs to listen to me because I don't get to talk to anyone else so, except you. So then I talk to myself. No, you talk to your mom. Well, mainly myself. <laughs> I listen when you talk. I just don't listen when sparingly I talk to you asking you questions. Sparingly. So like, do, you want, are you, do you want me to listen more? I think being a good listener helps people out. It okay. makes people smarter. I'm not saying. So I'm not smart now. No, you are smart. I, I heard I said, that one. I, I listen it, now. It makes people smarter. So you think I'm we not smarter? Re- and we could rewind this. It's, it makes people smarter when you because you don't learn when you're talking. Did you know that? But what if I've already learned a lot? But you don't think you can learn more? I can learn more. Well, if you're perfect, then you don't learn more, right? No, because you can always get perfecter and perfecter. Oh, perfect. Okay. Okay. So you want me to listen more? I'm saying that. Okay. That's not what I said. It's our sixth month today, and. By one year, this will be a completely different conversation. David's going to talk about how much I listen, how well I listen, and how little I talk. Right? Do you believe in me? Do you think I can do it? Well, I... You like to talk. I'm sorry. It's just something that you like to do. Because I don't get to talk to anybody. I don't have friends, really. Only a little bit. I don't have friends either. Exactly. So I talk to you. I think a year from now you'll still be the same as far as talking wise. I don't I don't see that going away. Well, what's going to happen when you have kids that come out like me and then um they talk as much as me or more? Well, that, I mean, that's good. You want kids that are expressive, extrovert or introvert. It doesn't matter to me. But you don't want a wife that's expressive? No, I like the expressive. Oh, you like it? I do. Mm, okay. <laughs> All right, guys. Well, we need to go to bed. So, Happy six months, my love. Six months. I actually got her a gift, though. And she doesn't know it. Actually, today's a six month. What is it? But officially, I'm trying to think. We didn't get married till like six o'clock at night. Wait, hold on. Was I supposed to get you a gift? Because <laughs> here's the thing. <laughs> His birthday's coming up. And so I've been like literally planning all this stuff and getting gifts and this and that. And so like... And that's why he it's wanted to. It's a month to, away still, though. I know, but but I'm doing it early because we're going to be traveling on his birthday. So I'm doing it like next week. So he wanted to get married on my birthday. And I was like, absolutely not. You got me mixed up because I don't want to share my birthday with an anniversary. Like, no. So, you know, I didn't get you anything because I already got you a bunch. Of, I could give you one of your birthday gifts early. <laughs> Do you want that? Because no, I feel a little bit bad. It's not a birthday gift. Do you want an anniversary gift? <clears throat> well, I thought on the six month, the first six month, not like a year and a half, maybe do something special. For you to me or me to you? Well, I thought it'd be cool to go both ways. So I should get you a gift? Well, actually, we can keep it rolling because we can all show everyone what it is as we're rolling right now. You can talk so you can keep this. Wait, you're going to give me my gift right now? Well, yes, yeah, it's, it's literally our anniversary. Or should I wait for later? I can take it right now. <laughs> or do you want it later? I can take it right now. <laughs> <laughs> but wait, was I supposed you to give like you a waiting. gift? Now I feel bad. But then if it's it sucks because then like when you go to sleep, then you'll already have it. Like when you wake up, then yeah, let's wait. Yeah, we'll wait. And but we, we can will, take a we'll video when we do it and show them. Yeah, we'll, we'll record it and we'll put it up on this channel. Comment if you think I should have got him an anniversary gift. I feel bad. I feel like, you know how like on Valentine's Day, the guy gets the girl something, but the girl doesn't always get the guy something. That's what I kind of, like it's an anniversary. He treats me. But maybe since we're in like the 21st century, I should have treated him. Let us know what you think. Give me gift ideas. Bye.